So I've got a new toy and I've been dying to show it to you guys. So stick around for this video so I can share my newest acquisition with you guys. I wanted to do something really different for this video. You guys really seem to enjoy the excursions where I go camping in creepy places. And I kind of wanted to get back to doing more of that. My last few videos have been a little heavy handed and, and while they do kind of support the mission, I worry sometimes that it's just a little too heavy. So I do still want to be able to bring you guys some fun content and this video is no exception. I came across a fascinating story. I was scrolling through TikTok one day. I came across a TikToker that puts up weird stories, particularly in what appears to be her home state of Arkansas. And this one really caught my attention, but I also wanted to work in a camping trip to go along with that story. So if you want to hear a creepy story and you want to watch some camping stuff, this video is for you. So I gathered up all my stuff and headed off across the bridge into Arkansas. It was about a three and a half hour trip from home to get to my destination. I had to go through Little Rock and a whole lot of backcountry to get to where I was going. But I was convinced that this trip was absolutely gonna be worth the time and the effort. So just in time for a late lunch, I rolled into Prescott, Arkansas. I came across this cool little restaurant that's obviously frequented by the locals. It's a 24-hour trucker restaurant right off the interstate. And obviously, they have a little bit of trouble with people that'll get off the interstate and use their parking lot to take a nap. Inside, the restaurant looks pretty much like you'd expect it to. And I had to be a little bit subtle with my video because the locals noticed that I was out of place. I kept getting a lot of side eye from folks. They were nice. They just uh, kept a close eye on me. But the menu had some really cool stuff, and I ordered up the plate lunch, the meat and three with chicken pot pie and sides of peas, corn, and pintos and cornbread and lunch came with a, a piece of cake this is a like a dump cake and i think they put all of the sugar they had into it this was so sweet but it was so good not a bad lunch for 16 bucks but i needed lots of fuel for what i was about to do i was about to dive into this excursion in this town of prescott arkansas for a story that goes all the way back to the early 1900s during that era prescott was a depot town with a train stop that brought folks through on a daily basis during this time there was a traveling salesman named mike and mike made Prescott one of his regular stops. One of the things that he was known for selling was pencils. Mike would arrive on the train at this depot that is now a museum. You can look around and you can kind of imagine Mike strolling around this place and what it would have been like back in the early 1900s. I imagine this depot still looks a lot like it did back in the day. And if Mike were still around, he probably would recognize every inch of this place. Because by all accounts, this was a regular stop for him as he brought his wares to sell to the locals. Mike would come in on the afternoon train and spend the evening and the next day he would spend walking around selling his wares in town and then he would get on the 3 p.m. train and continue his trip. Now Mike wouldn't have had to have gone far. It's a very short walk distance from the depot into the heart of town. All of these stores, you can still look around today and you can kind of see where Mike probably would have done a really good business as a traveling salesman. There were lots of different storefronts all throughout the downtown area of Prescott. And I can just imagine him going into these various shops and selling pencils and whatever else he had to sell that day. I can see him going into this barber shop to get his hair cut. He became quite a staple in the town. Everybody just knew him as Old Mike. Nobody knew his last name or where he came from or anything else about him, but he became a regular fixture in the town. This went on and on until August 21st of 1911. Mike was there at an event in the park, probably a revival, and someone came across Mike sitting at the foot of a tree, deceased. Well, as stated before, nobody knew really much about Mike. They didn't know where he was from, didn't even know his last name, didn't know who his family was, and they really weren't sure just how far down the tracks he came from. So Mike's body was taken to the Cornish funeral home. The body was treated and put in a box, and he was set up on display hoping that someone would come along and identify him. No one ever did for over 60 years. Over the course of 65 years, Mike became 
a tourist attraction and a bit of a celebrity. His body would be propped up for different events and it became kind of a rite of passage for locals to go and see old Mike. Mike was even rolled out one time and propped up when the funeral home bought a new hearse. So he became, in essence, part of the town of Prescott, Arkansas. From 1911 to 1976, his body was kept in a box in a closet and occasionally brought out for display. During that time, no one ever came forward looking for their lost loved one. Now it does seem a little bit strange and maybe even a little bit exploitive, exploited, exploitative to exploit, exploited, exploit. It seems like they might have exploited old Mike just a little bit. I mean, it seems to me that the rational thing would have been to take some photos of old Mike, go ahead and bury his body and just make those photos available if someone came looking. But that's not what they chose to do. They chose to display a corpse for the next 65 years. So in 1976, a law was passed that required that bodies be interred in a reasonable amount of time. And of course, that meant that something had to be done with old Mike. So I've got one more stop to make on this trip, but I'm gonna save that for later on. Right now, it's time to go check out my campsite. Just a few miles out of Prescott is White Oak Lake State Park. This is one of those hidden gem parks that uh, surprisingly not a lot of people know that this place is here it's an absolutely gorgeous park a lot of the camping spaces are right on the water now it is kind of a cedar swamp so that probably means a lot of mosquitoes when the sun goes down but it's an absolutely gorgeous place so now it's time for me to show you my new toy about six months ago i came across a listing on facebook marketplace for a teardrop camper i have been wanting one of these things for the longest time and i came across one that had a reasonable price and was not too far from home so i reached out to the guy and arranged to meet him in rogers arkansas and I took a little drive and I met up with the guy and sure enough it was perfect. It was almost a bare bones piece. There really wasn't a whole lot to it other than the fact that he had set it up with solar power which is something I really was interested in doing, but I don't have a lot of knowledge of it. I really wanted to be able to have a camper that I could take boondocking and off-grid camping, and this one really fit the bill. So I've spent the last six months building this thing out, installing the pieces that I need to make this exactly what I wanted. The galley when I got it didn't really have anything except for the battery pack and the solar power unit. So I got some one by sixes and I started building out the galley a lot of the pieces that I put in here were items that I got at the Amazon return bin store. This pull out drawer here is from the bin store. There's an aluminum foil and plastic wrap holder that I got at the bin store. And it's perfect for a place to set a few of the Coleman one pound propane cans. Now, one thing that I didn't get at the bin store, but it really means a lot to me is I've got a friend of mine that I work with that does woodwork. And I asked him to build me a tabletop for my cook station. And he built me this absolutely beautiful tabletop out of cedar. Look how gorgeous this thing is. And it's perfect for one of these little Coleman stoves. Now the camper is a four foot wide little guy. It's a very small camper and it's really suitable for one person too if you really like the person you're camping with. But it's a super cozy little thing and I'm looking forward to trying it out. But everything that you've seen on this thing for the most part with the exception of the solar stuff in the back is stuff that I put on after I got it. So I've got some stuff I gotta get set up so that we can get camp going. So I'm gonna put you guys away for now and try to get things rolling. Let me get started with some coffee. We're going to find out the hard way if this thing has any integrity in the hole at all. I knew that it was going to rain a little bit. I had no idea it was going to be this. This is actually a little concerning because this is very similar to what happened at home a few weeks ago. And I saw how that went. I don't think this is supposed to stop for a while. And I'm a little concerned that when it does stop, 
that I'm going to go out and find that my camper is unusable. I can't guarantee I got the doors closed or, or the back shut uh, well enough to keep any of this out. And it's raining sideways. Stick with me. I mean, you guys know me. If you've been around here for a little bit, you know a little bit of rain doesn't really stop me. I've slept in a soaking wet tent before, but we're going to have to see how this goes. This is uh, it's pretty intense. Alright, the rain has stopped for the time being, so we go back there and make an assessment and see what we're dealing with. Is that critter walking across the road in front of me? I think it's a turtle. Alright, let's go see how the camper's doing and hopefully we'll be able to stay tonight. Uh, I really hate to bail on a camping trip, but uh, let's see what we're dealing with. The chair got trashed. And the cover I was trying to put up, it's a mess. This was already leaking when I had to close it up. Yeah, we got a lot of leaks back here. Let's turn that off. Alright, here's what's going to matter. Alright. Okay, I don't see any leaks inside the camper, so I think we're good. So I survived the storm, and so there is a little bit of a leak in the galley area across the piano hinge that I'll need to address, but the interior is bone dry. So even though the, a little bit of water did splash in while I was trying to get everything closed up when the rain hit us all of a sudden, the inside of it doesn't have any leak. So <laughs> lucky me. But I did get to meet some of the neighbors after the storm passed. One of the great things about camping at a campground like this is everybody is your friend. Uh, except for that one guy that likes to like play really loud music or drives around in a really loud diesel truck. That, that guy, forget that guy. But everybody at a campground is your friend. You find yourself just standing around talking to folks, finding out about their lives and their rig. And it's just, it's, it's a really cool lifestyle doing this. But I did manage to get a tarp over the top of the camper to make sure that if we get any more rain tonight that it's not going to leak anymore. And I've got another little toy that I'm going to show you guys uh, here in a bit. This is something that I've been having my eye on for a long time. It's a little bit expensive, but I finally pulled the trigger on it and I'm so glad that I did. Now I want to show you guys my newest toy. This thing is so awesome. We just had major storms come through my area not so long ago and we were without power for eight days and I had just gotten this thing in and this helped us survive that blackout. So I'm dying to show this to you. Check this out. It's so heavy. This is an EcoFlow Wave 2. This is a brand new product. The Wave 1's been around for a bit, but the Wave 2 is a fully off-grid air conditioner. It operates off this little battery pack down here, and you can also add additional batteries to it. But this one, unlike its predecessor, has a heat pump too. We're not gonna need that tonight. We need air conditioning. Campsite that I'm at has shore power, so we're gonna plug into that, but this is gonna make this night really nice. So I put in this little thing back here. Let me show you what that does. This helps me get air through to the other side. I put that little pipe cap on it because I'm not always going to use this. When I'm not using it, I definitely want to be able to close it up so that it doesn't get all filled up with mosquitoes. So we're going to hook up the pipe to that little thing right there, and I'm going to have air conditioning tonight. 
and we are up and running. Given that this is the maiden voyage for the camper, I have not used the air conditioner with it yet, so I'm really anxious to see how it's going to do. I had some ideas for how I wanted to install it, but once I got it and got it in place, I realized it wasn't going to work that way, so I'm having to use this setup here. It's not ideal, but it is designed to work that way, so we'll see what happens. Let's go inside and check it out. Wow, this is pretty nice. Nice cold air coming through there. The fact that I'm on shore power, I can keep this thing up at maximum cooling. If it's running on the battery, you know, you got to kind of mind that. But let's give you a little guided tour in here. So there is the readout screen for my solar power. I've got a little mount for my tablet so I can watch movies or something in here. I've got a couple curtain rods over the doors that I installed. Now I've got some curtains down here I'm going to put up on there. I've got some switches up there so I can add things as I need them. And of course a light. Got a max fan at the top for using when the weather is a little more moderate. I installed a carbon monoxide slash smoke detector. Got a little basket there for hanging some things up. A little hook for hooking the curtains through. A little basket from the bin store there. So that is my living quarters. Right now I got my camera bag sitting here so it's taking up a lot of room, but my feet go down there. It will be cozy. A lot of people are going to look at this and think it's way too small for them, and that's fine. Uh, it's definitely not for everybody. Ooh, that air feels good. For me, it's perfect. I'm not terribly tall, so I don't have to worry about my feet hitting the walls or anything. Uh, I'm not scared of small spaces. Now, you know, there are limits on that, but I don't mind being in a place that's a little bit cozy. I'm really looking forward to sleeping in here tonight. I think this is gonna be super comfortable. And with that air conditioner blowing, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like staying in a hotel room. It's gonna be nice in here. What do y'all think of that EcoFlow? Is that cool or what? I mean, they, look, it's, it's an expensive item. It was an extravagant purchase to be sure. It's not something that everybody can go out and grab. I got really lucky and uh, I got in very early on. It got a really good price on it, but I also happened to have the expendable income at the time. And I really wanted one of these things because I'd really like to be able to take this teardrop and do some off-grid camping. But I also don't want to be limited by the seasons. And if it's just scalding hot, it's really hard to enjoy it. I'm gonna let this air run for a little bit, step back outside and take care of a couple of things. And then we will come back in here and maybe watch a movie on the iPad and go to bed. Well, that's another one for the books. That was a... Uh... That was an exciting trip. That is the worst weather I've ever encountered on a camping trip. And it was sketchy for a while there, but I got through it. And minimal drama, other than being a little concerned about where, where it could go. The, I slept awesome last night in that little camper. The EcoFlow air conditioner did an amazing job of keeping it extremely cool in the camper. It was exactly what I needed. The, the camper itself is super comfortable. Now, I, I toss and turn a lot when I sleep, and last night was no different. And I found myself waking up quite a bit. But every time I'd wake up, it was super nice inside the camper and it was cozy and I'd go right back to sleep. So the camper's packed up. The car's all packed. We are ready to go. I got the campsite cleaned up. Now this is site number seven. If I had to do this again, I would probably pick either nine or 11. This one is really nice and it's on the water, but it's just like a little finger of water. So it's a little more swampy than just water. Site number nine has this really cool swing where you can just sit and watch the water. And site number 11 has a really cool boat dock. And there's just a really great view of the water from both of those sites. So I think if I was to come back here, I'd do 9 or 11. So that'd be my recommendation. If you come out here to try out this park, grab one of those sites. Now, I told you guys we have one more stop on the journey for Old Mike. Let's go do that real quick as we wrap this one up. So the last stop in the story of Old Mike, as it should be, is Old Mike's final resting place. In 1976, after 65 years, Old Mike was finally interred into a grave with a marker that has a most curious epitaph on it. You know, typically somebody's gravestone is gonna say their name and when they were born and when they died. With Mike's, they took an interesting approach. It simply says, Mike, and it has the date that he died and the date that he was buried. Oh, and there's also a pencil, which I thought was a really cool addition. It took me a little bit to find the grave. It's a rather large cemetery. It's on two different sides of the main road, and I had to drive around in a little bit until I just happened to look over and see it. So if you go to Prescott, Arkansas, looking for old Mike, this is where you'll find him.
So I hope you've enjoyed this outing of creepy camping. This was a really cool trip for me. I had an amazing time driving around and seeing the town and going to these places that had significance in the life of old Mike. It's kind of neat being able to step back in time and imagine what this place would have been like when old Mike was around. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If you did, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell. And tell a friend, share this video someplace where you think people would have an interest in seeing it. It's such a fun story. It's weird, it's creepy, and then on top of that, I get to go camping in this beautiful park. But that's it for this video, and until the next one, prepare for the world that you live in, not the one you wish existed. See ya.